Government is taking steps to deal with labeling and patent infringement. A three-man protest over the high cost of electricity. And in sports, Chris Gale and the Royal Challengers Bangalore are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you. I'm Pearson Bowen. This is the CBC Evening News. Measures are being put in place to reduce the incidence of patent and label infringement of locally manufactured goods. That is the word from Minister of Industry Dennis Kelman. He says this illegal operation is putting those who work hard to manufacture their products at a disadvantage. Speaking during a tour of the Barbados Industries clothing plant in Wilde St. Michael, Mr. Kelman said the situation is not peculiar to Barbados. He observed that people are buying CARICOM products and placing their names on the labels. The industry minister added that he is taking steps to safeguard the interest of local manufacturing companies. Every time we allow a shipment of that, what we are doing, we are stopping Barbadians and people from CARICOM from getting work. And we cannot do that. We have to protect CARICOM and Barbados. And the same way there are countries who know how to use import substitution to their advantage and then because of their capacities can then dominate the comparative advantage we have to find a way to get back first to import substitution and then use that as a base so that we can deal with comparative advantage minister kelman says there is also a negative perception that manufacturing is not a major concern for barbados he wants barbadians to know that this can be a major foreign exchange earner and should receive support from all sectors. If we can get everybody to come on board, then everybody will benefit. If there are no jobs in Barbados, we will all have to get on a boat and go somewhere else. So it is not Dennis Kelman, it is not the PS, it is all of us, the reporters, everybody will have to ensure that we maximize the benefits of Barbados for all of us. It is not for Barbados industry, it is for Barbados. Residents of Valerie in Britain's Sills St. Michael are excited about the government's latest housing project. This weekend, the new high-rise development is to be unveiled by Prime Minister Frendel Stewart. Ron Brathwaite reports. The Valerie housing project is part of the Housing Every Last Person program. The new thrust by government to provide housing solutions to low-income earners. The Britain's Hill project will be a multi-million dollar high-rise solution, which will be launched this weekend. Prime Minister Frandell Stewart and Housing Minister Michael Lashley will officially launch the project. Valerie is a growing community, and these apartments are expected to offer 72 upmarket units to successful applicants. A special feature of the apartments will be the eight units allocated for physically challenged individuals and their families. The initiative is already getting the thumbs up from those living in the area. I think it's a good idea, which will bring more business to my place. And um, I don't have a problem with it. There's a lot of young people that are looking for homes, and they feel it will benefit them in that process as well. I guess that people will get to see that Burden Hill is not all bad, and there are some good things that can come out of Burden Hill. Officials of the National Housing Corporation tell CBC News the corporation has been bombarded with applications from low-income earners for rental units along the urban corridor. They say this urban high-rise project has been the ultimate response to satisfy that need for rental accommodations. Residents say, along with the new additional housing solutions, they will be calling for more thorough screening of applicants to stamp out any disruptive or deviant behavior. In addition to the 70-plus units at Valerie, the NHC will also be constructing another 84 units at Mason Hall Street in the city. There will also be units constructed at Colmore Rock, Exmouth and Deacons Road, and the Grotto at Beckles Road. Ron Brathwaite, CBC News. The National Insurance Scheme will be asked to fund only a small portion of the Four Seasons Hotel project. Chairman of Paradise Beach Limited, Professor Avinash Prasad, says that another $270 million is needed for completion, with only a small fraction being sought from the NIS. Professor Prasad told a press conference that once finished, just over 1,200 jobs, including 400 permanent posts, will be made available. The project is also expected to inject around $200 million annually into the economy. 
We have approached them. They have a process, a process of rigorous analysis and due diligence. They're going through their process. We have approached them and we have approached uh, other NIS uh, investors in the region. We are looking for as early responses as possible, uh, given the importance and size and time of this project. Uh, but they have, we have to wait for their process to be completed. Well, just weeks before the first anniversary of the passing of the late Prime Minister David Thompson, government is putting the final touches on a football tournament in his memory. Dubbed the David Thompson Memorial Football Classic, it is being billed as more than a sporting event, but an opportunity to bring communities closer together. Speaking after a site visit at the Gall Hill playing field in St. John, where the launch is planned for October the 16th, Director of the Department of Constituency Empowerment, Diana Haynes, said it reflects the vision of the late Prime Minister. He was highly associated with activities that sought to build um, strong families and strong communities. And it was under his watch that the Community Council's program was started. From the department, we see the Football Classic, this tournament, as more than just a tournament. For us, we want to provide that kind of um, community atmosphere, especially on weekends, that would give rise to mass participation as well as to promote that family unit, right? We're also hoping that through this tournament that new talent would be unearthed. Technical Director for the tournament, Mark Ford, revealed that the launch will be attended by several high-level officials, including Minister of Social Care and Constituency Empowerment, Steve Blackett, and Member of Parliament for St. John, Mara Thompson. Mr. Ford says an attractive top prize is at stake. We have a first prize of, of $30,000, a second prize of $20,000, a third prize of $15,000, and a fourth prize of $10,000. In addition, we have something called performance fees, this is when a team is, is leaving the tournament in the preliminary stage. We'll give each team $3,000. So that will be 14 teams that will be getting $3,000. Then the next stage, we will see eight teams leaving. Those eight teams will get $4,000. And then the final phase, we'll see four teams leaving. Those teams will get $5,000 each. Rosalind Smith is the new Acting General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers. She has been temporarily appointed to the post in the absence of Substantive General Secretary Dennis Clark, who is ill and in hospital. President of the NUPW, Walter Maloney, told CBC News Ms. Smith's appointment to the post was discussed when the Council met yesterday. He says two other positions were filled during that session. Delcia Burke will act as Deputy General Secretary and Richard Green will act as Assistant General Secretary. Mr. Maloney says although he is not out of the woods, General Secretary Dennis Clark is continuing his steady recovery. Clark was hospitalized last week after contracting hemorrhagic dengue fever. A St. Andrew man has been arrested and charged following a drug operation at the Bridgetown Port. He is Melvin Nolan Cumberbatch, 39 years of Hopewell. Cumberbatch has been charged with possession, possession with intent to supply, trafficking and importation. On Tuesday, personnel of the Customs Enforcement carried out an operation at the Bridgetown Port where a consignment of coal contained in three polythene bags aboard a motor vessel was searched and the contraband discovered. Cumberbatch will appear in court tomorrow. Three men have been protesting outside government headquarters and the Barbados Light and Power Company, both on Bay Street. The action was the initiative of the little-known People's Democratic Congress, protesting recent steep heights in electricity bills, which have drawn harsh criticism from consumers. The placard-bearing trio is asking the power company to absorb some of the hikes because of the millions of dollars in profit it has recently made. Mark Adamson of the PDC says it's high time that Barbadians see a reduction in light bills from the sole electricity supplier. The thing is really to make a lot of people aware that action has to be taken against the Barbados Light and Power. So this march itself constitutes a form of, of action against the Barbados Light and Power. The Barbados Light and Power and its electricity towers obviously are creating significant burdens, added burdens for a lot of people, consumers, uh, poor households middle-income households in this country. Uh, a lot of people obviously are unable to make certain ends meet with a lot of other bills that are, uh, uh, that are being paid, that they've got to pay. 
Six children who have made the transition from the special needs unit into public secondary schools have been rewarded. They each received a bicycle compliment to the Variety Children's Charity at a handover ceremony at the Plantation Garden Theatre. The Variety Club's mandate is to support sick, physically or mentally challenged and less fortunate, fortunate children. Executive Director Donna Russell said the students and their teachers must be lauded for the accomplishment which came despite several obstacles. Today we celebrate the strides these children have made, having witnessed other organizations rewarding the academics who move on to the older secondary schools, and I don't have to name those schools for you. Um, and so we celebrate their achievements given the trial and error they have gone through to get through a syllabus and a traditional system that is not always set with them in mind. Education Minister Ronald Jones told those assembled to witness the presentation that special needs were not specific to children who are challenged, but those with exceptional ability as well. The very, very, very bright child is a special needs child. And if the right things are not done, that so-called bright child can also be damaged. Because they're working at a pace, their mind, the way their minds are shaped and formed, can sometimes lead to intolerance of others, severe intolerance of others, because they're operating in a very, very narrow band of life. So we, the education has to give them, uh, 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 ingrain with them, in them, an appreciation for everybody else, or they too can be murderers and killers and plotters, because they have no patience or regard for everybody else. The locally produced television show Eggonomics has received international acclaim for its promotion and marketing of eggs and poultry. Ron Brathwaite reports. Its slogan is chicken is king, but certainly in this case it was the egg. Eggonomics, that is. The half-hour locally produced cooking program created waves on the international scene just last week. Eggonomics, through its celebrity star power, helped Barbados win the prestigious gold trophy in the just-concluded International World Egg Conference in Washington, D.C. The brainchild behind this sizzling program is Darren Holder. I'm totally flattered, totally overwhelmed, totally happy that Barbados could win an international award. Just like Rihanna. This victory was a feat the island was able to accomplish in just its first appearance at the grand event. Mr. Clark went overseas to um, Washington to present, um, do a presentation on eggs and they have an award every year for the person doing the best marketing in the country as it relates to eggs and chicken. So he used the PowerPoint presentation which involved economics. But he would have taken them to the website, economicstv.com, and um, they, he beat out the other countries, Barbados on top. The show, hosted by Chef John Hazard and Charlene, has featured entertainers, sports personalities, and politicians, an aspect which was a hit with local and international audiences. We have over 120,000 hits on Facebook. We got views from Africa, USA, Australia on our economicstv.com. And I can only see things getting better for economics. President of the Barbados Agricultural Society, Wendell Clark, says the concept of the show is in line with what agricultural stakeholders are trying to promote. It have taken us to the top of the world in our sector. And we can only, but, I mean, if we excel in these areas, we should only but maintain them and make sure that Barbados will always want to map at every angle. Producers of the show say plans are already on stream to make economics more community interactive. We came up with something called Economic Street Heat, where John Hazard and Charlene are going to be going to people's homes and filming them cooking eggs and chicken, where we have what we're doing one person from each parish. Officials say come October 12th on CBC TV 8, there's going to be a highly anticipated cooking face-off between eight-time Calypso monarch Red Plastic Bag and, yes, renowned politician Mia Motley, who will publicly showcase their culinary skills. This is one that, according to economics producer, that promises to be excellent. Ron Brathwaite, CBC News.